What's up guys, it's me Travis. Welcome to your 21st Android tutorial for the new Boston. What we're going to do in this tutorial is basically finish our, you know, finish our splat, or I'm um, sorry, our list activity and kind of talk through all this nonsense that's going on. Because I know most of you guys are confused. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this error for the most part. And we're just going to go over and see what the error is. It says surround with a try and catch because Basically, we could say whatever we want. We could say, you know, starting point, blah, 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 and be like, yeah, create a class for that. And it's going to be like, hey, you tried to trick me. There's no class like that. And I spent the past four hours trying to do that. And, uh, you know, basically our application isn't going to look like that. So we need to surround this with a try. So we're going to go above here and type try and put a bracket. And then we're going to also close off our try bracket right here after we try to start the activity and then we get rid of that error. The next thing we need to do is catch an exception. For example, uh, we're going to use the exception type class not found. So again, if this class is not found, it's going to give us that exception. So we're going to say catch and then we have to define the exception within parentheses. And again, the exception type is called class not found exception. We're going to label this exception or this or uh, give this variable the type or uh, I'm sorry the label e and then we need to create a new bracket and I'll try and keep all the brackets so you guys can keep track of everything I remember that was kind of difficult when I was a new programmer so there we go e dot uh, print stack trace again this is just for debugging we'll get into this stuff later probably maybe I mean it's not too important it's basically going to throw it around and not worry about it so there we go we kind of have our, our bracket set up but now let's actually get into making this application useful because now each time an item is clicked it's just going to start up our starting point class. So what we want to do is we want to have it start up a class according to the items that's clicked. But before we before we actually do that, let me just do an overview of what this application is doing and what we set up. So we set up a string array up here called classes and we set up a list array or a list adapter which is basically like a list view within the list view it has list items which we defined here um, just the standard kind of look of the list item here and each list item is going to have one position within our string array so we're going to have seven list items total and when each or when any of those list items are clicked it's going to call this on list item clicked method and it's also going to give us some information it's going to give us what uh, basically which list view was clicked it's going to label that L. It's going to tell us which view is clicked. It's going to label that V. And the most important one that we're actually going to use, it's going to tell us the position of within the list view that was clicked. And basically that's going to coincide with the position of our string array. So we know kind of the text um, that was clicked as well. For the most part, think of it like that. It also tells us an ID. So what we're going to do is go right within these brackets here. And we're going to set up a new string. We're just going to call this string local class or I don't know we're gonna call it cheese just so we don't have to think and you know all that good stuff so what we're gonna set this string equal to is basically we're gonna say like our classes array that we set up at the beginning and we can set it up to something like you know four for example and basically what this would be equal to or this is the fourth position within our class array up here so we have position zero one two three and four so basically it's the same thing as saying um, at the moment it's the same thing as saying this so we don't want to actually do that um, but that's kinda how this variable is gonna work our cheese variable is gonna be equal to just one spot of our classes array but since we're getting the position it's giving us that data we can use this variable that they called position within this class oh I'm sorry and we want to also move this string below the super line right here so um, I'm sorry for that but okay there, there's our string variable and, and we can use this position kind of data that's being passed in so we can just say position within here because again it's a it's an integer so it's gonna tell us what position was clicked so now cheese equals basically the position so the zero position was clicked this cheese variable is gonna equal starting point the fifth position was clicked it's gonna equal example five so now what we can do is we can set up a class according to which position was clicked or which list item was clicked. So we can do that by using this string variable because again, 
this class method basically is using a string with its parentheses. So what we can do is we can delete this, but still make sure you have your period there after your package name, and we can just say plus string, or I'm sorry, plus cheese. I was thinking of string cheese because that's delicious. But uh, there we go. So now it's going to open base or give this path um, to whatever list item was clicked. So if position zero is clicked, it's going to say our package name plus you know starting point, and then it's going to create a class variable, and then um, it's going to set up an intent according to that class variable. Again, I showed you guys a new way to do it where it takes a context and then a class variable, and then it's going to start that activity. Now, if if we click for example position five again it's going to set this equal to examples 5 and it's going to try to set up a class variable for you know our package name example 5 but since we don't have that we're going to get an error and it's not going to work or it's not going to work or I'm sorry I said that twice it's basically just not going to work since we don't have that class and it's going to catch or it's going to create a, an exception called exception not found and we're just going to kind of log that within the debugger so that's what that catch is doing so hopefully that kind of made sense guys um, but that's kind of how you can use Java by instead of typing a ton of lines of code, you can just kind of use these path or get some information from a method and then use it within there to, um, you know, do that. The only th other thing we're going to do real quick is set this up in the manifest. So we're going to go into the manifest and I must have been messing around with this. So just going to fix it real quick your manifest should be looking like this and so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the starting point activity and uh, paste it again below and we're going to change this to our new class called menu and we're going to give this the action name menu then what we're going to do is we're going to open our splash class up here and change instead of after um, instead of it starting up the starting point class we want to start up this menu class so we're just going to use the action name that we just set up in the manifest so there you go now our application should be working I'm just going to test it out make sure I don't get any errors and again I know that's guys I know this is probably confusing and you probably don't understand everything or maybe even five percent of that list activity you guys understand don't worry because it's going to get easier. We're going to get into some simple stuff in the next tutorial. So that, thanks again for watching. But um, there we go. Uh, we have our list activity started. And if we click like examples one, two, three, it's not going to do anything. It's going to throw that exception. But if we click starting point, it's going to open up our starting point class. So, and again, we did that through setting up a class variable instead of using the action name. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Have a good one.